Hey everybody, David Nagel. Guess what? You don't have to find your purpose. You need to discover your authenticity. Purpose is already here. Join me on the next Successful Mind Podcast. All right, so check out this, this quote by Soren Kierkegaard. The deepest form of despair is to choose to be another than himself. So think about that. The deepest form of despair is to choose to be another other than himself. Um, which, which leads me to my first point here. Your purpose has nothing to do with what you do for a living, but how authentically you embrace who you are, because then everything else follows. Now think about that. Part of the reason that we can't find our purpose is because we're chasing the wrong thing. Um, I really love this idea because the idea means that the more you become your authentic self, the more you will, you will put yourself not only in the path of your purpose, but your ability to actually be able to see it. So we see we see things based on our perception. That's how, that's how we see whatever it is that we're experiencing. We see it based on our perception and the meanings that we've given to things in life. Um, and, of course, like m- those meanings, most of them were given to us. People told us what meanings to give to other things. I think that um, one of the biggest problems that we have as human beings is that when we're growing up, the outside world is always suggesting to us who we should be. So we have the media, we have success, we have athletes, we have movie stars, we have middle-class heroes. Um, we've got uh, uh, lower, lower-class, broke, uh, ghetto-type uh, mentality. I mean, that, we've got you know people in other countries that are starving, third-world mentality. Uh, working class mentality, mediocre, sick people mentality. There's all different kinds of mentalities in the world. And depending on who we are, where we're raised, what we're around, uh, the viewpoint of the people that were really influencing what thoughts were going into our mind, that is generally how we see the world, the equivalent to all of those things. So, now you think to yourself, okay, you want to break out of that. Uh, you want to find what your purpose is. You're, you're heading down the road of life whenever you decide you want to find your purpose. And you start looking and you can't find it. Can't find it, can't find it, can't find it. You meet somebody like me and you say, hey, David, how come I can't find my purpose? Or how do I find my purpose? Um, and it's an interesting thing because... The universe doesn't hold anything back. Everybody has a purpose. Everything, all forms of life have a purpose. Why is it so difficult for human beings to find their purpose? It's not. It's that we're looking for the wrong thing. So let's look at the truths in nature. The one major truth in nature is that all of nature is always in its purpose. But here's another truth that goes with it. Nature doesn't think itself to be something that it's not. That means nature's always in its authenticity. Human beings, on the other hand, usually spend lifetimes trying to unravel what somebody else told them that they were to find out who the hell they really are. So I have discovered that when people really step into their authenticity, they, they meet right up with their purpose. It's like, woof, it comes in as it had been there the whole time. Uh, But they're able to see it, and they're able to step in it, and they're able to embrace it, and they're able to accept it. Uh, uh, So the the real journey is not about finding your purpose. Your purpose is already here, and it's waiting for you. Waiting for you to do what? To step into your authenticity, really to understand who you are, accept who you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when you do that, you'll be able to see your purpose. It, it, It won't be difficult at all. Um. 27, 20, no, not 27. Let me think. Um, 20, what? 20, 27, 27 years. I spent really struggling with um, 
Now, it wasn't 27 years. It was 25 or 26 years. I spent really struggling with how do I get out of the situations that I had created for myself, both from my childhood, then into my young adult life. And as I began to change my attitude, all of a sudden, there was the door. There was the door out. There was the door to raising the income. There was the door to opportunity. It had been in front of me all along, but I couldn't see it. Now, looking back, I did do something that you could call external, so to speak. I, I decided to change my attitude. I looked for some external representation of what the attitude looked like from uh, as far as other individuals. I took on um, uh, ideas, ways of being from another person, and I began to act and behave as if those were my attitudes of mind. Um, but there's a deeper truth there. The deeper truth is, why did I pick those three things? Because I could have picked a lot of things. I could have picked a whole hell of a lot of things. The reason that I picked those three things was because those three things resonated with who I was authentically as a person. I would not have picked those three things if it didn't resonate with me authentically as a person. I would have picked something else. Remember, I'm coming to this realization after suffering through the experience, kind of a dark night of the soul type of experience, where it was like, fuck this, I can't do this anymore. The next step is we're all going to be damn homeless. Um, I've got to figure this out. I've got to find a way to break through. You know, I was at the end of the end of the end. There is an opportunity for to make the significant change. It comes from within. The voice that I heard that said change your attitude came from within. And I, and I, and I began the process of making that change. So yes, I changed my attitude, but I also started to step in simultaneously into my authenticity. And I think that that's probably even the more important lesson because the more I stepped into my authentic self, the more I was being put on the path to come face to face with my purpose. Um, the, the study, the time, the awareness, the enlightenment, the, the experiences that I were having, that I was having, the ability to say yes to things and no to things, the tightening of boundaries, the raising of standards, all, every single thing one chip away at the block at a time, I was becoming aware of my authenticity. And the closer I got to my authentic self, the closer I got to my purpose. And then one day it was like a teeter-totter. Uh, when one tiny stone tips the whole bunch, there it was. There was my purpose for me to step into. Now, that didn't mean that I didn't have to grow. That's like the growth really, then I the growth really started when I stepped into into my purpose. But, but if you're going to find your purpose, you've got to shift your thinking. You're not finding your purpose because you're not, you don't know who the authentic you is, period. And you have to step into the authentic you. So let's, let's go down here. I've got a lot of notes that I've made for this podcast and I want to get as much of this information to you as I possibly can. Next, stop chasing a marketed image of success and learn who you really are. This requires radical honesty about what you really want and like and what you really don't want and don't like. Um, and here's the thing. You don't need to justify what you like or you don't like. So that's part of the radical honesty part about this. So people say, well, how do I find my authentic self? Well, you start with you. And you start with being honest with yourself. You cannot find your authentic self if you're not going to be honest with yourself. If, you are, um, if, you're, if you're walking around pretending to be something because you need other people to like that or like you or accept you, you're not being the authentic you. If you can't if you can't say yes to what you want and no to what you don't want, then you're being something for someone else. Let me say that again. If you can't say yes to what you do want and no to what you don't want, you're being something different for somebody else. Like you're, you're looking for approval somewhere along the line approval or safety or, or whatever other people represent to you. But you're never going to find out who you really are until you start being honest with yourself. And the other thing is that the reason that I put this in here, you don't need to justify it, is because you don't. It's you. The moment you go into justification, you're looking to get other people to agree with you. You're trying to find a reason that will resonate with another person for your change in hopes that they'll agree with you. 
and that they probably won't leave you or, ju- or, or judge you, right? If you're going to be authentic, it's about, you, you know, you put your stake in the ground and you say, this is who I am, and then you watch the universe pivot around you, meaning that depending on where you do this in your life, by the way, very often we have a whole life built around us when, we, when the day comes that we decide to start stepping into our authentic selves. We have a whole life built around us. And that means that as we do it, that life around us is going to start to change. Why? Because when you change, you force everybody around you to change. If by the sheer means of the idea that they have to adapt to your change, so that means that they're going to they're going to see who you are. They're going to watch what you do. They already have a pre-programmed response of all about you because you've been together, you've interacted, and now you're changing. So they don't have a pre-programmed response anymore. The pre-programmed response that they do have doesn't fit. So now they have to change, and now they have to decide how they're going to change. And usually that makes most people feel uncomfortable. So. As that makes people feel uncomfortable, you risk judgment or you risk people leaving. You you need to know that this is perfectly fine. It's perfectly natural. It also means that other people would be attracted to you. People that accept the authentic you, that celebrate the authentic you, that validate the authentic you, that want to do things with the authentic you. But if if you try to stay in two worlds, like you've got one foot in the authentic, and the other foot in the safety and the appreciation of others, um, you'll create a mess. It'll be just a damn mess, and you won't get what it is that you're looking for. So it, so the honesty and the, the, the ability to stop trying to justify and being radically honest with yourself is extremely important. Next, stop letting others tell you what you should do and stop letting other people tell you who you are. Um, we're raised this way, aren't we? Like from the moment that we, uh, come out of mom, somebody's telling us what to do. Somebody's telling us what we are. People are looking at us and going, Oh, look at the cute baby. So they're telling us what we're, how we appear to them. Um, and it goes on and on and on, right? So we get good boy, good girl, bad boy, bad girl, um, you know, all the different judgments. People are looking at us, they're observing our behavior, they're observing who we are, and they're labeling it and feeding it back to us. So we kind of become puppets for these people over a period of time, all through our life. Even if we develop a rebellious attitude, it's usually in rebellion to a thing, which means we're still in relationship with a thing, okay? So if... uh, You know, if you have, let's say there's two kids, they're born of the same mother and father, they're in a family, one of the kids uh, goes along very easily, whatever mom and dad say, they, no problem, they're going to do it. The other child is rebellious. Everything mom and dad say, they're going to do the opposite. What's important to know is that both of those kids are in relationship to what mom and dad say. One's doing it, one's doing the opposite. But they're using what mom and dad say as the pivot point for their own thinking and behavior. So even if you do it out of rebellion, you're doing it out of relationship to what somebody else says or thinks about you. You're still not thinking for yourself. You're not thinking for yourself. The rebellion is that you don't want to be like your brother or sister. You don't want to go along to get along. You want to do something different. You found a way to get attention by doing something different, by being a rebel. But it's out of rebellion of what they think. So believe it or not, they're still holding the hand. They're still holding the controlling hand over your life. And then either way, whether we're going along to get along or we're rebelling, we usually go into our life and then everybody in our life that we meet, including usually our our sexual partners or our life partners or our spouse, is some version of our mother or father. Why? Because that's what we're used to. We're used to dealing with familiar patterns, so we don't typically hook up with somebody in life for any reason of an unfamiliar pattern. We're, we're, we're mixing with people that have familiar patterns, whether it's go along or get along or rebel. So you end up going through your life in reaction to what other people think. It's becoming authentic is, is really 
drawing a hard boundary and going, I just don't give a fuck what other people think. I'm going to be and do what I feel I want to be or do, right or wrong, uh, whether people like it or don't, I'm going to do it and then let the chips fall where they fall. But you cannot find yourself until you break free of the good opinion of other individuals. You just absolutely have to. Then you have to ask yourself, whose voices are in your head talking to you? You have to separate from them and find your own voice, which means claiming what you want in every situation. Claiming what you want in every situation. So as you go through your day, you're going to be in different situations. You're going to be in situations with other people. You'll be in situations by yourself too. But you have to ask yourself, the voice that's in my head that's telling me to respond this way or behave that way or react this way or commit to that or say no to this, whose voice is that? Is it really your voice or is it somebody else's voice? Is it mom or dad's? Is it a school teacher's? Is it a minister's? Is it a friend's? Is it an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent? Um, Is it a spouse? Is it a lover? Whose voice is in your head? that's telling you what to be, do, and have on a daily basis. And recognize that, and then ask yourself the opposing question. Is this something I really want to be, do, or have? Regardless, and you don't have to to share this with anybody. It's it's best done in in private or in secret at first. Because you don't really want to let anybody know you're doing this. Because if there's anybody that's threatened by your behavior, they'll try to shut this down fast. And you want to... You want to be able to break away from that. So you don't tell anybody you're doing it, but you're asking yourself the question in, in every interaction, what do I really want? Even if you don't voice it in that moment, what do I really want? Because if you don't start becoming aware of what you really want, you never will. You'll just keep going along with what you think you need to choose so that others won't leave you or that so others appreciate you, or so that you can keep the job, or so that you can get what you think you need from other people. But it's all just horseshit. I mean, it, it's, it's such a con game that has been played on us that we have bought and into for our own safety and security in life. So you have to start with asking yourself, what do I really want? And do it with every situation, every single situation that you're in. What do I really want? What do I really want? Because you're getting to know you by asking that question. See, you can't ask for what you want if you don't know what what you want. You can't say no to something if you don't know that you don't want it. You may want it. You may want it because it fits into one of the boxes of safety. Ooh, I feel secure if I, you know, if I don't go along with this or if I go along with this. Somebody won't leave me or be mad with me, mad at me or upset with me. So I'll do whatever I think they need me to hear or they need me to do so that they feel secure. We have to really think around that because we got to stop that voice and we have to start to learn our own. Um, You're too focused on your career making money because of responsibilities and because you're afraid uh, that you, you won't get it. You won't get it. So let's think about this for a second. As I've said many times, generally when a person wakes up to making some kind of change in their life, especially with finding out who they really are, we do this at a time where we've created responsibility. We may have a family. We may have a spouse. We may have children. We may have built a career and a job. We may have all different kinds of things in our life. And now we're going to find out, we wake up one day, we look in the mirror and we're like, holy shit, who the fuck am I? How did I get here? Where did all of these responsibilities come from in my life? And we start asking very serious questions and we find out to our amazement and our horror that Most of the things that we've chosen, we don't really want. And it may be for the first time in our life that we've actually admitted that to ourselves out loud. But now we've got a problem because we have a tremendous amount of responsibility. Now, what many people do 
is they shut that voice down right quick and they go to their grave without ever exploring it any further. Um, others, on the, by the way, will hear that voice and then they will struggle with the ramifications of making the change. So what does it mean if I step into my own voice? What does it mean if I start claiming what I want? What does it mean if I start saying yes to what I want, no to what I don't want? Where I start demanding what I want out of life. What does that actually mean? Well, we know what it means. It means significant change to the responsibilities that you've taken on if they're not in harmony with that voice. Let, I mean, we're just going to say what it is. It could mean a divorce. It could mean walking away from a family. It could be going in a completely different direction. It could be finding a new mate. It could be leaving your job. It could be starting a business. It could be leaving a business. It could be moving from one country to another, one state to another, one town to another. It could be changing your appearance. For some people, it's changing their sex, changing their identity of who they, who they see themselves as, what they identify with. We know that going down this road by exploring these questions can have significant ramifications on a person's life. However, we have to ask ourselves, is there really any other way to live than to be authentic to yourself? Can you ever really find happiness if you're not? Can you ever really find a, a serious in love relationship if you're not? Can you ever really enjoy the, the great things that life has to offer if you're not, if you can't ask for what you want? How about, how about your purpose in life? Like doing, doing what you're put here to do, can you find it without doing that? I don't think so. I don't think that you can because you don't know who you are. Your purpose wouldn't even be recognizable. I mean, your purpose is predestined to fit your authenticity. But if you're not authentic, you can't find it. And if you've set up a life of responsibility based on what other people told you to be, you're not being authentic, so you can't find your purpose. But some people will drive themselves crazy. They'll continue to look. I'm going to continue to look, but I'm not changing anything. You got to realize the universe is not changing its laws because you're stubborn or you're ignorant or you want to be a pain in the ass. It's not going to. So that's where you put yourself in a situation to suffer, period. You suffer. And guess what? You're making everybody else suffer around you. There's an old saying, if it's not working for one person, it's not working for, for everybody else. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. That means that when you come to the realization that you may have created a whole team of people around you in, in whatever that looks like, you call the team family, you call them friends, you call them church, you call them business, you call them work, whatever, social, whatever it is, and you find out that you have chosen the wrong things and then you're in the wrong place, it's the same for them also. They're just not aware of it. Because if it's not working for you, it's not working for them. And ignorance doesn't make it so. It's just that you're the first person that's waking up to it. So now it's the process of getting to know yourself and then really creating the life that you actually want. How about this? You constantly distract yourself with busy work, family, or visions of, uh, of other people's success. These are very common blocks to a person's purpose. Because we're distracted, we're busy. We will fantasize about another person's success. Like we'll live vicariously through another person's beauty or another person's talent or another person's sexuality or another person's form of expression. Um, because we're too afraid to change our life to find our own. And you're going to have to change your life to find your own. You're going to. You know, sometimes I will tell a person this over and over again, and they keep coming back to me with the same question. If I just step into my authenticity and I just be myself and I just keep being positive, will the person that I'm with that wants nothing to do with this eventually come along? Probably not. Because the person that you're with bought into who you said you were in the beginning 
right? When we have anybody around us that does not want to change and, and we're going to develop the value of change in our life and stepping into our own authenticity, you can't make somebody do that. You've got to give up the idea of making someone else change to fit your narrative, your new narrative of the world, because it, it doesn't work that way. People change when they're ready to change. We want people to volunteer to change, to find their own authenticity and step into that change. Um, the next one is that you actually let family tell you that you can't do it. So the family being uh, family friends, people, people that, that you have put in a position of authority, meaning that you've given them permission to interject their opinion upon your life. And so, so in, in, in some cases, for whatever the reason is, you respect them. They have the power to do that. Well, if they're going to tell you that you can't do something and you're going to listen to it, uh, you're pretty much doomed from authenticity and purpose. You probably won't find either one. It's, it, and, it, and it's not even as much that person. It's the fact that you're either asking them to begin with or you're listening to them. Because think about the premise that that comes from. Why are you asking somebody else about your authenticity or, or your purpose? Like what gives them the qualifications to know either one? Th these are very intimate spiritual principles that only are revealed to the owner, which is you, not to your spouse, not to your friend, not to your sister or your brother or your kids or your grandmother. It's revealed to you and it only needs to make sense to you. If you put other people in the position of, of giving them the power to give an opinion on this, you're not accepting your own voice. You know, some of this is trial and error. You have to, if you think you like something or you think that something is authentic in you, but you've never really tried it out, you have to give yourself permission to try it out and see if you like it. Do you like being that way? Do you like doing that thing? Do you like hanging with these people? Do you like practicing an instrument? Do you like sports? Do you like movies? Do you like um, hiking? Do you, know, do you like mountain climbing? Do you, wh what do you like? You, you won't know unless you try it. You could look at things from a distance and you could go, yeah, I'd like that or I don't like that. But how many times have we heard people say, fuck, I never imagined in a million years that I would like this. And then I tried it and I'm like, oh my God, this is absolutely amazing. Because they had a prejudgment in their head, probably from somebody else. Stop letting other people tell you. Okay, the next one's a big one. You let your dark side control your thinking. You let your dark side control your thinking. Now, what's, what's, what part of our dark side here is in control of the thinking? Past failures, deficiencies, uh, hidden desires such as sex, fun, um, uh, even anger and revenge, hidden abuse of any kind, shame and guilt, fantasies of greatness, and any, any or all weaknesses, right? These are all things that are lurking in our dark side, uh, meaning the shadow side of our personality that we, that we have repressed, we haven't expressed, they're hidden, they're secrets. Um, they are things that we don't, we're afraid to express. Like we see this around, we see this around sex a lot. We see it around fun a lot. Um, we see it around uh, the authenticity of a person's expression. Expression. So those are those are a couple of positive ones, because people have labeled or judged those ideas. Like a person is not supposed to enjoy their sexuality, or they're not supposed to ask for what they want, or they're not supposed to have more than one partner. With fun, it's like some people actually believe you're not supposed to have fun, that you're supposed to suffer. Like you're just supposed to suffer and work hard and suffer and work hard and, and that's it. Who are you to have fun while everybody else is suffering? That's kind of the, the mentality behind it. Um, the, uh, the other ones can be hidden desires of any kind to be, do, or have something. 
You know, like you desire to have the car or you desire to have something, but nobody else has it. So what gives you the right to have it, right? So these are like some positive hidden things in our dark side or being something, you know, like you wouldn't want to tell anybody you really want to be this or that or whatever. Like only you know what it is. But on the negative side, we we have things like anger or revenge, like... You know, hidden slights of some kind, abuse of some kind that you that you're consumed with rage over, and you just want to see a person burn at the stake because of something that they did, and you have no way to express it. So it just builds and builds and builds in your subconscious mind. Shame and guilt around anything that you've done, anything that anybody's done to you, things that you know that were done to others. They, they can harbor just hidden tons of, um, amounts of shame and guilt, and then fantasies of greatness, which also come on the, the good side of things. But sometimes those fantasies of greatness in, a, in the dark side of our personality, we're using to overshadow low self-esteem, right? So these things that are kind of lurking around in there, past failures, weaknesses, all of that, they become a reference point silently. I call it the silent killer because it's a reference point of negativity, for most people, even the positive things I mentioned and the, and the, the negative part about it is that they won't allow themselves to experience it, right? So it becomes a negative by default. So they lurk around in that dark part of our personality. And when we think about doing something else, when we think about being authentic, when we think about asking for what we want or saying what we want or not, it's like a trip wire. We trip the shame and guilt, which causes us to say no. We the, and, the, and the guilt can be for things that we that we want that our mind is saying you shouldn't want that, or it could be guilt for something that we did in the past. It could be shame around something that we did or we didn't do. Like there's all these stories running around in the dark side of our personality that if we don't get clear on those and learn how to express them in a fundamentally healthy way, it keeps us from experiencing our authentic self, which ultimately keeps us from finding our purpose. <clears throat> the next one is, you think messages from your higher self and your subconscious are just fantasy or they're not logical because you don't see how you would do them. So I often tell people, you got to follow your desire in life, man. You know, like your desire is pointing you in the direction to go with everything. Right, So you could say, what would I want in this situation? Or you could say, what do I desire in this situation? Same thing. It's pointing you in the direction of your authentic self, which will reveal your purpose. Um, if you don't think it's logical, if you have a desire, let's say you have a desire to become a billionaire, right? And right now you don't have two nickels that you can rub together. You're watching podcasts for inspiration. You know, you're eating McDonald's every night. You can't get off the couch most of the time. You're depressed. But you have a desire to become a billionaire. And you can't see any logical way that you would ever get there because you keep using your current life as a reference point. You can't become authentic because you can't stop using what's in front of you to try to logically reason out a pathway to get there. You don't need to do that though. When you're when you're authentic, the pathway shows itself. It's not that the pathway is not there, it's already there. How about this? You're just plain lazy. You procrastinate. You're a lazy fuck. I mean, at least admit it if you're a lazy fuck. Say I'm a lazy fuck because you can't change it till you admit it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Procrastination and laziness are bad habits that spiraled in the wrong direction. They, they're they very much focused on, on gratification, instant gratification in the moment. Procrastination, you know, just like, let's call it what it is, it's an avoidance technique. It's the way the mind avoids doing something that is uncomfortable or frightening for a person in the moment and they want immediate gratification instead. So what do they do? They do the thing that is going to give them the immediate gratification, which is usually procrastinating. But then procrastinating becomes the habit because it immediately satisfies 
even though it spirals out of control with shame and guilt down the road. But if you stay in that, you can't find your authentic self. Because immediate gratification is taking over your choice for authenticity. Um, And last but not least, you think going after your authenticity or your purpose is selfish. And you're not willing to fail or make a mistake. So, first of all, it is selfish. It is selfish. Um, if, we, if, if, if we're going to be authentic, we have to be selfish. Like, we have to be focused on ourself. And I know that from a value perspective, many people around the world are taught, you don't focus on yourself, you focus on other people. They forgot to leave out the part about when do we find who we are first. Like it's great to focus on helping other people once we have identified who the hell we are. And then we've cultivated something that we can actually be a benefit to other people. Not sacrificing who we are for other people. It was never meant to be that way. And then the other thing is, is that you have to say to yourself, I am going to spend some time being selfish. Because I need to find out who the hell I am so I can find my purpose. So I can step into my purpose. The other thing is making mistakes. You have to realize that all learning is mistake-driven. Meaning that we were born to make mistakes, but we were also born to correct and to continue to move forward. We didn't come into this world knowing how to do anything. Nothing. We had to become aware of everything that we, that we could do. And we had to practice. We had to work at it. We didn't come into the world walking. You never meet anybody who was just too fucking lazy to walk, so they never learned how to walk. You never meet anybody where their parents said, oh, you're a stupid kid. You know, you're uncoordinated. You're never going to be able to walk, so they don't walk because of it. But at some point, those messages get in our head. And then what do we do? We don't do it. And we think mistakes are wrong because we go to school and we're taught it's not okay to make mistakes. You're holding up the class. You're being a dunce. You get a big red F and they ridicule you. They humiliate you. You go home, you get grounded or punished from your parents. Instead of somebody realizing, hey, that F is a symptom of something. Like what's going on with this kid? Is it that they just don't know or are they having a study problem or a learning issue or is there an attitude thing going on? Is, is the kid suffering in some way that we don't know about it? And they help correct it so that the kid gets back into the curiosity of learning again. You have to be curious if you're going to learn. But if you're afraid to make mistakes, it won't happen. So I think if you're struggling at all with finding your purpose – you probably should listen to this podcast a hundred times because the problem is not your your purpose. It's your authenticity. You don't know who you are. And then contact our office if there's a way that we can help you with this further because it is the greatest, most foundational thing that you can ever do and nobody teaches it. Nobody teaches it. Very few people ever address it and people walk around in the dark all of their lives. So I sincerely hope that, uh, the, that this is reaching the right people that need to hear it. Be authentic, man. It's a great life. Just wrapped up with how to find your purpose, why you're not finding your purpose, but find your authenticity. I hope you liked it. I hope you loved it. Make sure you subscribe, ding the bell, do all the things that are required to stay in touch with us. Tell a friend. Give somebody this podcast. It might be the greatest gift you ever gave. Talk to you soon.